there was a queue of people outside the gates of heaven. Each person was asked the question, Why do you think you should be admitted into heaven? The first person in the queue, a very religious man said, I studied the Holy Bible every day. Very good, said the Lord. We'll have to carry out an investigation to see why you studied the Bible. So please step aside for a moment. The second person was a very pious woman who said, Lord, I said my prayers every day without fail. Very good, said the Lord. We'll have to see if your motives are pure. So step aside for a moment. Then a poor and elderly widow approached and said, Lord, on earth I wasn't a very religious woman, but my door was always open to the homeless and I never refused food to anyone who was hungry. Very good, said the Lord. In your case, no investigation is needed. Get into heaven right away. Next week, we enter into the season of Advent in preparation for Christmas. There are five seasons in the liturgical year. Four weeks of Advent, two weeks of Christmas, five of Lent, seven of Easter, and 34 ordinary weeks. The last Sunday of the liturgical year, the 34th Sunday, is celebrated as the Feast of Christ the King. Though the concept of King and Kingdom was dismantled many decades ago, when we think of a king, we think of a crown, a palace, royal robes, great wealth and a powerful army. A king is a distant person and seen only on special occasions. Picture the scene in today's Gospel. Alone and unarmed, Jesus stands on trial for his life. The religious leaders wrongly accuse Jesus. Pilate saw that Jesus was innocent of the charges, but the religious leaders began to exert political pressure. The focus shifts from Jesus to Pilate. Pilate now was the one on trial. Would he see that justice was done? He struggled, then compromised, and finally bowed to the pressure. There have been a few cases across the world when the men in the judiciary are put on trial. The nanny case of the 19-year-old English foreign student and babysitter, Louis Woodward, whom a jury in Massachusetts convicted of killing an eight-month-old baby in 1997, was headline news for several months. There was conflicting medical evidence. Many people thought that it was a miscarriage of justice. A defense team appealed against the verdict. The case was given for review to an upright and independent-minded judge, Hiller Zobel. Hiller Zobel was a man not swayed by popular opinion, or one who would bow to pressure. At the start of the case, Louis Woodward was on trial. Now it was the judge, Hiller Zobel, who was on trial. The verdict he reached would show if the claims about his integrity were true. After careful deliberation, Zobel changed the jury's verdict. Louis Woodward bore some of the blame for the death of the baby, but she was not a murderer. Hiller Zobel set Louis Woodward free. Zobel emerged from the trial with an enhanced reputation passionately concerned about justice. At one time or the other, all of us come under pressure. All of us find ourselves on trial. By the way we live, we declare whether we are on the side of Jesus or whether, like Pilate, we take to a way of compromise and cowardice. It is said that we grow into the image of those who love us and those whom we love. We are often influenced by the people we live with, or associate with, or admire. Sometimes consciously or unconsciously, we follow that pattern of behaving and acting. Jesus invites us 
to grow into His image and likeness. Today we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. We love, worship and admire Jesus Christ our King. The image we have of Jesus as King will influence the way we worship and also the way we respond to Him and to one another. Jesus says that His kingdom is not of this world. His power is made manifest in gentleness and service, not in arrogance and brutal force. At the Last Supper, He got down on His knees with a basin and a towel to wash His disciples' feet. Jesus was defining a new way of being King, a new way of using power, a new way of using force, the force of love. The Kingdom of God has no physical boundaries. The boundaries are drawn in our hearts and in our homes, in our families and in our communities. We can use these boundaries to keep Jesus the King in or use these very boundaries to keep Christ the King out. Nelson Mandela was a young man when he became the leader of the banned African National Congress. At a certain stage in the struggle, he was forced to go underground. During that time, he used many different disguises. In general, he remained as untidy and unkempt as possible. He knew that by being so disguised, he ran the risk of not being recognized even by his own. And this often happened. Once he was to attend a meeting in a distant part of Johannesburg, a colleague had arranged with friends to put him up for the night. When Mandela arrived at the house, the elderly lady who answered the doorbell took one look at him and shut the door on his face saying, We don't take beggars in here. Later, when she found out that it was Nelson Mandela whom she had turned away, she was horrified and said to him, If only I knew it was you, I would have given you the best room in my house. Mandela didn't allow incidents like this to deter him. God and his messengers come to us in many ways. Often we do not recognize his coming. We admire people who are loyal and faithful. We can show our loyalty to God by respecting and caring for God's people especially those who are lonely and marginalized, old and sick, poor and neglected. While we may not like the idea of kingship, and we certainly do not want someone to have control over us, yet most people crave for one thing that the kings, especially in the past, exercised – power. Either openly or subtly, we do exercise power and like to have power over others. Today we are reminded that God is the ultimate power and authority and God commands our respect and loyalty not because He exercises power over us, because God constantly cares for us. May we discover and serve our King in serving our brothers and sisters. Amen.